and still trying to understand the mystery of the cross. I mean, why would Jesus ever have to come and die? I'm still trying to understand it. I know we cannot understand it until we get to heaven. Perhaps we ask God himself. <laughs> why will he come to die? Why would God choose to become a human being? I can't understand it. Theologians tells us that uh, a being first existed before man. And the Bible made so much reference um, to it that suggests that uh, there was a first creation and then a second creation. But something I know very clearly was when God was going to make man again, the Bible says that, the Bible says, let us make man this time in our image and after our likeness. So I don't know what the others look like. As far as I was concerned, there were animals. But God created the first set of people who look like him and have his likeness. But I was trying to imagine that God could have just made another man when Adam fell. How come he stood so low to come and die for us? What a mystery. It, we cannot understand it. I don't think I will ever understand it. I will ask him when I get to heaven. But I cannot imagine that I created a robot and the robot misbehave and I decided to come and die for the robot. It does not work. How many of you die for your creation? <laughs> It's even difficult for parents to go uh, take a death, uh, death sense, uh, sentence for, for their children. You know, your son misbehaved, and then you go and tell the judge, I want to die in place of my son. It's difficult, right? You only go home and cry and cry and cry. Oh, he's been killed. Oh, you cry and leave it. Life continues. I've never seen a parent saying, no, let me go and die. Take the punishment for my son. When you know he's guilty, he was an armed robber, he killed many people, he was caught in the heart. When they sentenced him to death, and then you come out and say, I want to die for him. I don't think it's very, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's possible you get to see some things like that around. But then how come God found man, created man after the dust, and he could easily create another being? And just to replace the system, just change everything, but yet he chose to honor it. Something tells me that there is something special about us that make God so, put so much value upon you. And so this God deserves our appreciation. It means that it's a privilege, uncommon privilege. I don't think the angel understand why God places so much privilege and grace and favor and love upon humans. To call him a father, to call him a father. A servant lives in a house but cannot call his master father. He says, Master. When a servant begins to call his master father, you know it's a rare privilege. It means that that servant has been upgraded into the status of a son. And so for God to not just see us as subjects of, or of his creations, but calls us children and we can call him father is a privilege. So to come before this king who is our father <clears throat> and just to say him thank you is what we call thanksgiving. And once every year we must all come before him and the Bible says none should appear before me empty. Don't come empty. The second thing we said Thanksgiving is, is that Thanksgiving is returning to the king with substance to say thank you. That means Thanksgiving is not something you just come and roll on the floor 42 times. No, that is not it. I saw someone one time, God did something great for her. Saved her life and she said, oh God, what do I have to give you? She rolled on the floor from one end to the other, down to the other hand, down almost seven times. And she stood up and went back to see that. That was insane. <clears throat> because God does not need people rolling. If not, the angels would be rolling everywhere. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there is praises going on 24 hours every day in heaven. The 24 uh, elders that sit around him bows their head every now and then with their crown falling down. 
they pick it up again. It's a routine, sir. It has been a routine for thousands of years. Hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's a routine. Praise is natural in heaven. When you get to heaven, first thing you observe is praise. It's ongoing. <clears throat> so what makes praise or thans, uh, praise thanksgiving is when there's a giving attached to it. It's coming with our substance. It's not coming just to dance before him, but it's coming with a substance and dancing with that substance to him. And so he specifically said, let no one come before me empty. So we don't appear on a Thanksgiving day empty. It's a dangerous thing. It's a very, very, very dangerous thing to come before him that day empty. Ah, it's, it's better they don't come. <clears throat> I was wondering what would have happened if Ananias and Sapphira didn't come to Thanksgiving service that day. They would have been alive. It's a dangerous thing. It's a day you get accepted, but it could also be the other way around. So once you're coming, <clears throat> come prepare to say, Father, thank you. And we discovered that Proverbs chapter 3, verses number 9, Proverbs 3, chapter 3, Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. Honor, he says, with thy substance. Honor, the word there is honor. He didn't say give to the Lord your substance. He said honor the Lord with your substance. So giving is different when we talk about honor. It means that you value someone and then you come with something that you know will please the person. It's called honor. Honor the Lord with your substance. <clears throat> a man one time was bringing a thanksgiving and then the, he was bringing a ram and the ram had uh, a key leg. The ram was leaping. I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with this man? At least bring fowl that is healthy. Then bring lamb. Everybody's looking. Ah, the ram is big, but look at his leg. And the Bible said, don't offer such to me because I am a great God. I'm a great king. Don't just come before me. Come prepared to honor me. Whatever you give to God, on a Thanksgiving day, in fact, any time you give to him must be from the angle of honor. Our Papa was saying it the other time. It's true that even when you want to give your offering and you have a bad note, reserve that bad note for the first station. You might say, oh, the church is going to take it to, a, to the bank account. You know, see, God receives it before the church receives it. And he's seen you when you were selecting it. Nobody saw you, but God was seeing you. I said, God, you know, this bad note is good for you. Let me. <laughs> he said, no, all know me with everything you do. You have notes in your, uh, in your wallet and you want to give a particular amount. You have several feet. When you have the one that are neater, take the one that are neater and put it. Nobody saw you, but God saw you. It was him you were giving. He receives your heart before he receives your gift. So he says, anytime you are coming before me to do anything, make sure it's the best. It's what we call honor. <clears throat> make sure it's the best. Honor. Honor me with it. Don't just give it to me. Honor me with it. And then I'll prove myself in your life. He says, see, I am not compelling you, but I'm asking you to come every year to thank me. If you consider that I've been good to you, then come before me with your thanksgiving. He said, but don't just come before me because I'm not just one God. I'm not just kind of God. They pro, you know, the, <clears throat> people are funny. They get wood and put iron or cutlass, nail it upon the wood. Every now and then the pro can carry on the, on the God, you know? Very stupid thing. Then the pro, oh yeah. The, the God is sweating. They're pouring oil on him. No one can achieve to even clean his face. It's, Suffering God. So, <laughs> God said, I'm not that kind of God. We just bring. No, when you're coming before me, when you go to market and you want to buy something for me, look for the best. Say, it's my God that I'm bringing it to. He said, no, it's human being that will collect it. He said, no, before humans touch it at all, God receives it. And so, if I'm coming, I must come as unto the Lord, not unto man. It's called honor. 
the manner in which you are prepared, the manner in which you have packaged what you are bringing, the manner in which your heart is ready to come before him, is what is called honor. And then we read further, uh, the next point we see that thanksgiving expresses your valuation of the king and your recognition of his heart. His acts, his hearts, the works of his hands. Thanksgiving is a proof that you value God. You esteem him high. That is why I said, before you bring anything to me, try and see if your governor will accept it. Don't say I will understand, but you cannot expect your governor to understand. If you are going to thank the governor, I appreciate him. How will you appear before him? He says, however you are going to appear before him, look at it and then judge and ask yourself, my God and this governor, who is more important? So if I am the most important, then scale it properly and think well before you appear before me. Why? Because when you appear before me, I will crown the rest of your year with favor. I will crown the rest of your year with goodness. The governor cannot guarantee a, a happy, successful 2018 for you. But God can guarantee a successful year for you. The, the government cannot guarantee your safety, sir. But God can guarantee your safety. It's the God that listens. When you come to a point when you please God, he listens even to your thoughts. You are thinking of something and God goes ahead to do it. You have a problem, you are thinking of how to solve it. Before you open your mouth to pray, answer have already gone ahead of you. When a man's way pleases the Lord, his enemies, God will make to be at peace with him. So your problem is not your enemies who are around you. Your problem is just pleasing God. Once you please God, you, don't, you will not need to deal with your enemy. He will deal with them by himself. We we'll saw it with Solomon. How God kept him on the throne 40 years, no single war. The same throne his father sat on for 40 years and fought 49 wars. One and a half every year. But Solomon sat in that same throne for 40 years and never fought a single war. Instead, all the people that hated his father were sending him gold. The man was stupidly rich. He built two houses. In modern estimates, the two houses are standing well over one trillion dollars. Built a temple with about five hundred billion dollars. Not even big gates. The, the five richest people on earth put them together. They still not amount to that amount we are talking about. Yet one man built one house with it. Imagine you carry the wealth of big gate and one buffet together to build one house. Now think about it. <laughs> they are the floor of the compound. No, we are building this place now. People are jealous. Yeah, you, you, a cement ground. We are talking of somebody built a, a house like this and the whole compound was gold. The floor of the, the, where you park car was gold. That was how rich it was. The walls were plated with gold. There was nothing bronze, bronze in that building. Then when he was building his own personal house, he built it with well over $500 billion. Hey, two houses, $1 trillion. My dear, <laughs> that is how God can bless. But you saw the history, how he appeared before God out of love, did something that no man have done before. And God blessed him the way he has never blessed any man before. So coming before God is to know that he's the one that can guarantee you a successful future. Whatever anybody promises you, they can fail, sir. But if God decides to honor you, you will be honored. You will be honored. When you want to see a man you are expecting something big from, you send something big to him. Abi? Now, what about the God that created that man? That man can promise you today and die in the evening. A man got a call from a man and said, please come, I bought some equipment for you. Come and carry them. The man said, okay, I will come on Friday. On Wednesday, the man died. So when he got there on Friday, he saw the man's poster. There was no need. He can't be talking about the man promised me something. He had to go. <laughs> So it, it was like, if I had known I would have come that same day to come and carry it. He just waited two days extra. By the time he came, the man was dead. He asked them, did you say anything about me? They said, no. <laughs> that was the end of the matter. I said, you see, man, I have no guarantee over their lives. 
They can promise you and fail, not because they want to fail, but because it failed them. They didn't have the capacity anymore. A man can tell you, come, on your way going, a problem bigger than him will come upon him. That your problem becomes secondary. He does not, he's not, he will call, when you come, say, please, I can't attend to it anymore. But he told you to come. Before you came, another problem has visited him. That is human being for you. So you can't put your trust on him. But there's one that you can satisfy. And if you satisfy him, he will satisfy you. The one who hears your prayers, who feels the pains and things you're going through in your heart, and will respond without you even saying a thing. I was sharing with them yesterday. My wife was supposed to come back yesterday, and uh, she was supposed to take a flight back because of uh, my sister who was supposed to also travel down. So she was going to take a flight back from Lagos around 11. And she had a papers, a paper to write uh, at about 8. We got a call that the flight is no longer for 11, it's now for 9 o'clock. Wow. From Unila down. Whoa. How is she going to make it? So we started making plans. God got someone to check her in. Fine. So the point was to wrap off. Everything was delayed and delayed. They delayed the exam to nine. The guy called me. I said, is there a possibility of a, of a delayed flight? They said, no. And if that does not happen, she's going by road. It's going to be late before she's coming. So I just said, Lord... Delay this flight. Create weather problem. Create any problem. Delay it until she comes. So I was trying to solve this problem. The next thing I got the call, I said, okay, the flight has been delayed for 30 minutes. I said, okay. I called her, 9.30, she still had, they have not attended to her. Oh my God. I said, God, this thing is not good. No, delay the flight. <laughs> I was just like that. Then I was going to enter into uh, the message at Place of Kings uh, with starting service, so I could not make any call. I sent a text to, I said, call this number, it will be done. But I left it. I said, Lord, I know it's in your hands. Do what only you can do. My dear, she got to the airport 11.30. They boarded 11.35. They kept delaying and delaying and delaying and delay until she arrived. The moment she arrived, they moved. Five minutes after she came, they moved. The God who delayed it for, from 9 to 30. A man came in now and said, ah, I don't know why they delayed that. She now said, I delayed the flight. The man said, ah, why did you delay the flight? She said, ah, papers. <laughs> she was not smiling. From Benin, God delayed the flight in Lagos. If your way is please God, he will listen to your very thoughts. And he will change things you never... Do. You see, you don't understand what it means for God to be pleased with you. Just please him. Leave the rest of the game. You see, don't bother about the anxiety of 2018. 2018 is a tough year. It's a very one, tough one because that is the year politicians are trying to make their way in doing all the campaigns, quite a lot of funny things will happen in 2018. But this thing I know, God does not need economic reform. God does not need economic policy to lift any man. God can, we have risen in recession. It's in Buhari time. We have had the best year ever. Inside recession, inside recession, that's when we are doing the things we are doing. It doesn't it surprise you. Yes, because God is not controlled by the economy of Nigeria. Not even the economy of Africa. Dollar does not affect him. Because silver and gold belongs to him. When he wants to direct it to you, just do it. So it's very uncommon ways, uncommon rooms God opened for you. That is why the first thing you do is to ensure that you are in tune with him. That you please him. Please him and forget the rest. If you are here, you are thinking about how your Thanksgiving is going to be. No, no, no. I want you to just sit down and ask yourself, can I sustain myself in 2018? No. Do I have any person I can depend on to guarantee me 2018? No. So who am I depending on God? Then why won't I please him? Come, let him accept you. If he accepts you, forget about 2018. It's settled. It's settled. It's settled. 
It's settled. I have my thanksgiving, my wives, my two children. Yes, even Rebecca, she doesn't know what is going on. But I've thanksgiving for her and labored her thanksgiving, wisdom, intelligence, and favor. So when she grows up and they're seeing her mind, <laughs> and computer mind, they will say, ah, it's because his father is brilliant. He's a lie. It's God, seed, seed that is opening the brain. You see to open the brain. Our first fruit was sent to Papa. As soon as we were through with the naming ceremony, I knew how much is it. Just sent on my, took my phone on it, transferred the worth of it in SMS, in a credit to Papa's phone. The father connect this child to favor. <laughs> so when, when you see them, David and Rebecca, those people, bless people. <laughs> Your destiny have arranged. I have arranged it. Eh? Plug them into, you know what I'm, I'm plugging them into grace. So when you see their mind, the way they are thinking, fast, intelligent. Ah, don't say it's because their father is bright. It's not because of me. It's seed that is unlocking their brain. It's understanding, sir. Let God be pleased with you. And even your enemies will be compelled to favor you. The people that don't like you will be the people that give to you most. Where they never liked you before, those will open for you there. It's please, you see, please. That's why I, I, I'm just concerned about one thing. Anybody can be angry with me, but not Papa. Eh? Anybody can be angry with me, not Papa. Oh. I, don't, I don't like it one bit. I can, instead, I'll go an extra mile. I want him happy with me, not for anything, because I know what it, what it brings. It's a fever that follows when your father is pleased with you. Now think about God being happy with you. It's a fever, sir. You don't understand. I can tell you what I'm experiencing. I connect everything to my father happy with me. Papa is happy. That fact that he's glad with me is enough. It settles me. My sister, younger sister, did something, and it, it really touched me. I was so happy when she followed my wife when she was going, because she just gave birth one week. She needed to go travel for her exams. Wow. I looked for anybody. My mom could not go. Her mom could not go. And she has one week baby to carry. She has exams. Whoa. My younger sister said, I will go. And she has been looking for a job a long time. She went. I was so happy. When they told me how she was receiving her, how she was helping, I said, oh, God, thank you. She went two weeks away. They called her the next week to come and resume a job. She got two job offers. Now, she was in Lagos. She got two job offers. They called her to come and resume on the first. She said, no, I can't because I said I will be coming by the upper week. They gave her, okay, come on Monday. Now she came. She just came in today. She's traveling tomorrow to go and pick up a job on Monday. What she could not achieve just because I was happy with her. That is how it is. When your father is happy with you, everything works for you. Just please God. Forget about men. Please God. And the heavens will open over you. If there is anything opening the heavens over this ministry, it's because our father is pleasing the Lord. Once there is, once is the connection is there, God is happy with you. Anybody that tries to harm you, God will rise up against them. You won't have to fight yourself, fight for yourself. No, you won't have. He will fight for you. You, you, see, you will see what it means to touch the apple of the eyes of God. Even in error, God still said, David, my servant. How dare you want to touch him? Even when David was in error, you could not touch David. David was untouchable. Even when David sinned, instead of God to punish David, he was killing Israelites. David met God and said, God, you are not the one who committed this sin. It's me. Keep me. Keep me a family. God said, instead of me to kill your family, oh yeah, bring South Africa. Let me end this thing. <laughs> instead of God to kill, he was the one that did it. Why did God kill any member of his family? Because the man was in tune with him. If God is pleased with you, say, even when you are wrong, you will be punished people around you instead of you. <laughs> Somebody say favor. That is what you have come to carry today. 
and your hands will carry it. Amen. In 2018, let people say things are not going well. Not for you. Your story will be different. <laughs> your story will be different. Amen. All the things that have not worked that were prayer points, after this service today, they will become reality. Amen. They will become reality. Amen. They will become reality. Amen. In the name of Jesus. As you adjust and prepare yourself. If you don't have it, don't deceive yourself. God is not a man that he can be deceived. God is not mocked. He sees it. He knows. Your excuse, he knows it. He sees everything. He knows what you could have done. He knows all the options you have. He knows everything, sir. Don't, don't try to, just leave those things aside and tell God, I don't know how I'm going to survive tomorrow, but I know if I present and commit tomorrow into your hands, I will not lack. And then come before him with that joy. Dance before him today with all your heart. As you offer your sacrifice, I know that the God of this mandate will beautify you. Amen. As he has beautified this mandate, he will beautify you. Amen. Your testimony will begin to resemble the rock of ages. Amen. You will begin to see people coming to give you properties that you never thought they could ever give you for your life. Amen. Doors will open for you that you never knew you could get. Amen. Men will begin to locate you and favor you. People will walk into your life from everywhere and begin to take you to next levels. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Contracts you have never done. They will forget whether you have done it at that capacity. No, they won't ask questions. The next thing they will say, send your account. Why don't you have the qualification? No, send the account, but just go ahead and get it done. We trust you. <laughs> the Lord favor you. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord caused you to go from strength to strength. The Lord increase you in grace, increase you in might. 2019 will deliver for you. Before this year ends, because you are coming to thank God today, it will be testimony all the way. You will end this year the best year ever. This Christmas will be your best Christmas ever. In the name of Jesus. Can we lift up our voice and give him all the praise? Give him all the praise. Can we lift up our voice and give him all the praise? Thank him, thank him because this thanksgiving is settling you. It's settling you, it's settling you, it's settling you.